Hello, visual learners. If you struggle with pharmacology, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to be going over everything there is to know about warfarin in a fun and easy way. So make sure you stick around to the end as we review some mnemonics and memorization tips to help you retain the information for exams. So if you're ready, let's color and learn. Warfarin has been around for over 60 years and is a widely used anticoagulant. It was first invented for its use as a rodenticide to kill off rats, but today it is used as a blood thinner medication to treat and prevent blood clots. Fun fact. Do you know how Warfarin got its name? The beginning part, WARF, stands for Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation, and the suffix is from the brand name Coumarin, similar to the brand name Coumadin. Since warfarin is used to treat blood clots or thrombosis, it makes sense that it's indicated for stroke prevention in patients with atrial fibrillation who have a high thrombosis risk. It is also used in patients who have formed a blood clot in a deep vein called a deep vein thrombosis or blood clots in the lungs called pulmonary embolism. For contraindications for cautions that you will likely be tested on, there is a box warning for major or fatal bleeding. This is expected considering this medication is a blood thinner and too much of a good thing can cause us to swing the opposite direction and bleed. Because of this, we want to avoid warfarin in patients with a high bleeding risk, such as those with hemorrhagic tendencies, including loss of blood from damaged vessels, blood dyscrasias, uncontrolled hypertension, non-compliancy, or recent surgery of the eye. Remember, this medication should not be given in patients who are pregnant. Why? Well, it can cause birth defects and bleeding problems for the baby. Because of this, it is considered a pregnancy category X, meaning do not use. Let's color in this visual to allow our brains to focus and retain this key point. So how does warfarin work? Well, let's take a look at how clots are formed in the body. The liver produces clotting factors that use vitamin K as a cofactor to be converted into their biological active forms. Warfarin inhibits this process by blocking an enzyme called vitamin K epoxide reductase. And what does vitamin K epoxide reductase do? Yes, it reduces vitamin K epoxide down to a form of vitamin K needed for the production of vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Make sure you understand this. There are four different clotting factors that warfarin decreases levels of, and that includes factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. It also inhibits protein C and S. So how in the world are you going to remember this? Think of this mnemonic. 2 plus 7 is 9, not 10. 2 plus 7 is 9, not 10. So if the patient ends up taking too much warfarin, there is an antidote for it. Can you guess what it is? Yes, it is vitamin K. This makes sense because warfarin inhibits vitamin K dependent clotting factors. So to combat this, we get the body more vitamin K. Another way to think of it is vitamin K makes the bleeding okay. Side effects to keep in mind. If warfarin is taken correctly and drug levels are within range, there should not be any side effects. However, at high doses, it can cause bleeding. Some rare side effects include skin necrosis and purple toe syndrome. Let's color these in their respective colors to help us remember these facts. Clinical pearls and counseling points to know. You want to educate your patients to take warfarin at the same time every day, preferably in the evening so that we need to adjust the dose of warfarin based on the R&R level we can do so. Warfarin has a ton of food and drug interactions that I'll go over in another video, but make sure to educate your patients to tell their healthcare provider if there are any changes in medications or diet. 
Educate the patients on signs and symptoms of bleeding to watch out for including bruising, black, tarry, or coffee ground stools, or blood in the urine. Avoid alcohol, aspirin, and other salicylates that can also cause bleeding. Remember that INR monitoring that I was talking about before? Well, blood levels called INRs are required for monitoring to see how effective warfarin is at decreasing the risk of clotting. It is a measure of clot time and the goal is usually 2 to 3. Let's take some time to review all the information because repetition is the mother of all learning. So when you think of warfarin, I want you to think of warfare as warfarin is waging war on coagulation factors. Color in this war tank with a W on it to remind you of warfarin. The war tank is attacking coagulation factors produced in the liver. Do you remember the mnemonic that we use to help remember the specific factors that warfarin depletes? Yes. Think of 2 plus 7 is 9, not 10 for factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Know this because this is a common exam question. Warfarin also inhibits the body's production of protein C and S. These are proteins in your blood that work together to prevent your body from clotting too much. Think of it as your body's natural anticoagulants. Therefore, in the initial treatment with warfarin alone may temporarily make clotting worse, leading to symptoms of skin necrosis and purple toe syndrome. Warfarin works to suppress the production of vitamin K dependent factors in the liver through the inhibition of which enzyme? Yes, vitamin K epoxide reductase. The enzyme that reduces vitamin K epoxide to a form of vitamin K that can be used in the body to make coagulation factors. As an anticoagulant, warfarin is used to treat and prevent blood clots in patients at high risk for stroke, deep vein thrombosis, or pulmonary embolism. The most common side effect seen is bleeding. Other rare side effects include skin necrosis and purple toe syndrome. Color in these words in their respective colors, red, black, and purple, to help you retain this information. Some key facts to keep in mind. What needs to be monitored to ensure warfarin is working effectively and to decrease the risk of bleeding? You got it. INR levels. INR stands for International Normalized Ratio and it's a blood test to measure how long it takes for your blood to clot. Warfarin has a lot of drug interactions, so educate your patients to let their healthcare provider know if they are started on any new medications. Since dark leafy green vegetables contain high amounts of vitamin K and can interact with the effects of warfarin, it is important to counsel patients to keep their consumption of vitamin K foods consistent in their diet. Alright guys, that's it for today. If you found this helpful, click that subscribe button for more. Let me know if you have questions in the comments and I will be happy to answer them. And remember to never stop having fun while you learn. If you're interested in getting more information from our Top 200 Drugs Made Easy Coloring Book, I'll leave a link to the product below in the description and I'll see you in the next video.